everyone welcome back to our channel channel today we are going to see comparison of p chart and lane p chart what are the differences between these two are the very same chart called proportionate proportion of nc unit right and what we are going to do is we are going to do it in excel as well as in many tab and that is one thing we are going to do today and also can be used as a predictor and when generally when you have a defect data it is called attribute data or also called discrete data and can that be used as a predictor that also we are going to uh, add it today so in this excel there are three you know the color coding being used one is red this is my data set and sample size and a different sample size i have is called variable sample size and because variable why it is called variable of course uh, the numbers are different and one you have 1000 unit 300 and 200 and all that another thing is defective in each sample for example 300 been inspected one defective lamb was found and 400 been checked two were found similarly 350 three were found and so on and so forth and the p chart just to give you a basic p chart is used when we have defective data defective meaning like we are talking about unit we are talking about scrap we are talking about the full unit and so on right proportion of in non conforming unit it is in the simple what uh, many tab does is it just divides it actually like for example b2 divided by a2 b2 is what 1 divided by 30 maybe i will do it uh, for you i'll just delete all this one and i will just invoke the formula number of defective divided by sample right Zero. and then do it and then you just have an enter rate so the formula being applied throughout the cell right and if we are saying like p bar for example like say p is 0 0.012 this will be incorrect why because when because see the denominator are different we should not average it down rather what we should do is we should do and sum of, for example, sum of all the one A column and sum of all the B column, and then I have divided. This will be the perfect method. Just sum this up everything, sample one, that's what I have done here, and B, and then divide it. And you will get this one 0 0.01116. Like th that means, in terms of percentage, it is 1.11 percentage effective we can have. Right, that's what I just converted into 100. That means I have got one percentage of defects I have. Okay, another set of things. So, known sample, let's say if I do the same thing with 1 million or 10 lakhs, like I have just inserted 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and one. I may end up having 1,159. Right. So that is the defect I might get it, right? In terms of uh, you know the percentage, this is the percentage I may get it. And let's say 5,000, this is the number. So if we know that actually it is 10,000 defect, I mean, uh, if it has been done with the 10, 000, I mean, 10 lakhs or 1 million opportunities will be tested sample, and we are going to get 11159. So let's do, do it another thing. I'll come back to that chapter very quickly. 1159. That means we are operating at 3.78 percentage. Another way, you can also cross verify 99.8841, right? So same thing yield 98.8841. That is equal to 3.78, almost the same 3.78 in both the cases we have got either from the dpmo value we can get this one or either with the percentage we can get back the zst or the sigma value or dpmo we can get it okay let's come back to this chap chapter p chart and uh, lanai p chart right so this is now we have understood in the excel what we have done so there are what we have done the data set that data set we just did it manually in the proportionate factor and then we did it like p bar value p bar meaning average of average that means this is the one we, uh, we have learned it and then what we have also learned is that actually we can use this as a predictor 
uh, that's what we have done but generally not used but in some cases we wanted to use you can use it okay so let me give a little more dimension to it so before i go to this uh, uh, you know mini tab so control limit exactly the two p chart this also p chart this also p chart this is line p chart this is normal p chart control limit on the line p chart are wider are wider can you see here that uh, the same data set but uh, the limits are different right uh, and wider than the those the tradition p chart right and to adjust for the dispersion or dispersion it adjusts the data but actually like p chart it just depict how much the you know the control limits get calculated based on that formula it gets calculated uh, using that one and it gives it it's type forward so what do you mean by that so let me open the mini tab i'll tell you how the limits are getting calculated i'm opening up the mini tab i have opened up the mini tab now what i will do i will just copy paste these two uh, columns and uh, i'm just pasting here so i have 24 data set what i'm going to do is start and uh, go to quality tools in that you have sorry control charts go to control because a control chart is a specific tab is there control chart and attribute chart of course it's attribute chart p chart you just click on p chart you have here there's something called help just have a click on that and you will get all the formula what is being used what is millennium method what is meant by the uh, samples how the calculation is being arrived all these things you will get to have this one right so now i will close it actually like now what what is the variables the defective lamp that is c2 is my variable what is the subgroup the variable subgroup we have that is c1 and then i'm going to give okay so this is the table i have got p bar that is average okay this is the first thing let's let's compare actually so first value is zero zero triple three i have got let's see how much we have got in excel same thing right exactly the same value of this. maybe if i increase one more digit and it will it will show up the same thing same value it will show up right exactly the same value i have got in this one let's this is the outlayer i have the outlayer is a uh, sample number eight that has got more defects then right? let's see and then uh, come back to that eight eight we have i mean the eight this is the one we have 0 0.0467 exactly the same thing we have here 0 0.04667 and by the way so we got the p bar value 0 0.0 0 0.0116 0 0.0116 let's see 0 0.0116 exactly the same thing remember we should not average this one we should do sum of all these I mean, some of all the samples, some of all the defectives, and then do it. So that is the right approach because you have a different denominator as such. Let's go back uh, to this one. This is the P chart we have got, and we have understood that this is outlayer. I am mean, just brushing it. This is the outlayer in the row number eight. Have an outlayer. All these we have got. This is the different uh, one because actually the limit is different. Uh, one has got uh, different samples, so therefore this limit has got different limits. The same thing what I will do now, I will run that line a chart. So go to statistic and then you go to control chart and attribute charts and line a p chart. Create a p chart that corrects for over dispersion or under dispersion. It corrects it. Let's have a go and click on it. And then what is the one uh, variable? Defective lamps is my variable and subgroup is sample size. And I'm going to give OK. And now I have got it. Let's compare. So this is the P chart I have. Maybe I will just close it down. This is the P, P chart I have. Exactly the P bar value is same. Right? You can see here. P bar value is 0 0.01116. Here exactly the same thing. But the limits are different. Right? So you see that UCL here we are talking about 0 0.02 that means two percentage right here it talks about the four percentage it is auto or dispersion or under dispersion it correction 
so that is what this one it also gives that uh, 1.75 sigma value also it gives it this sigma value is not referring to process uh, sigma right this is only your data set sigma many people do get confused with this one this does not talk about the process sigma process sigma we had already calculated how much we got we got 3.7 or 3.78 to be precise 3.78 sigma we have got this is nothing to do with the process sigma this is the data set what we have given and how that over discussion or under discussion is being been behaved that's what it says okay let's do a little bit of the same thing control e i will give so that i can go back to the same window i will click on help so here you have all these definitions the linear chart similar to tradition p chart but the only thing is it takes care of that over discussion and under discussion it take care and very importantly read this is the very important point the calculation for the linear p chart includes sigma z which is an adjustment for over dispersion or under the dispersion it, it, it does not talk about the sigma value yes sigma z i mean say a value of one indicate that no adjustment is necessary and the line chart is exactly the same as tradition p chart when the value one is being occurred okay let us close this one this is what uh, we have got now you are able to get it uh, uh, so this two and uh, this is this gives a little additional clarity and uh, when you say when you have uh, you know more or less the same one when you have the narrow dispersion this gives even more perfectness maybe what do you mean by that so what i will do this is the another sample another the same thing what i will do i will just modify some data i'll make it everything one example everything one this is not ideal case but you know i will make some something like that and then i will run that uh, defective chart you see here actually the value has come down significantly and the z value also has come down very very significantly because it does not need to you know adjust any any of the values and all that right so let me just go back let me undo it and uh, let me just go back to the original data set which i had i'll just copy paste this data and then paste it back here so i need to select the array and paste this data again i will run that uh, one and uh, this is what i have got the p chart and this one i will have it again comparative window i will have it with the p chart and let me do it with the another parallel window i'll get it so i will go to control charts and then you have attribute chart and then p chart right i will go and have a click it and this is exactly what i have got okay another chart you have in the p chart another chart one of the other speciality of p chart is p chart can also be used if the sample size is same what do you mean by that for example here sample size is same example sample equal sample we have every time we are getting it uh, very equal samples let's say 300 or uh, maybe we can say 500 example 500 so what i will do i will just copy and paste this 500 and uh, what i will do i will give control e instead of sample why do we say sample equal i'll say now it will say stripe line because the sample size is same right that's the reason it has given stripe line and this we can p chart we can use but predominantly we use for variable sample but we can also use for the data even the data is sample equal uh, you have if the sample size is equal still you can use p chart asset let's go back let's uh, modify this one let's go back to our original topic let's let me keep that uh, the uh, defect i mean variable sample chart and this is the value i have got let's compare this one so i have got uh, two p chart i have so i will close one p chart now and there is also another chart uh, which is also very very less being used so i will go to control chart and i will go to attribute chart and this is what we have seen so far p chart and uh, uh, line chart and then there is also for determined whether to use a p chart or line chart or this one you can also go to diagnostic 
and then you can take this one and then subgroup you have sample site you wanted to omit anything no i don't want to omit any value and this also it gives it so it gives a recommendation for you and uh, the ratio of observed expected variation is 163 percentage and because actually like uh, all the values are very very less you have on the dot on the slope but otherwise you have uh, you know non-linear right so you have away from the slope line right 94 percent uh, upper limit that is six, 163 using p chart should not result in elevated false alarm the upper limit depends on the number of subgroup the average subgroup size the overall process p so that means we need to have a more and more this one this is a binomial probability plot and it is uh, you can even you can make use of p chart itself that means we will we can we, from this window we will determine whether the p chart uh, we can use or not so and in this this is what the p chart it is recommending it and even if you wanted to see one more time just in case if you wanted to see what is the uh, Lenny chart one one last time i will quickly show it to you you can go to control chart you can go to attribute chart and then you can go to Lenny chart and then have a go and click okay and i will just keep it i will keep all the three chart in the same window so that it will be very interesting for you okay and uh, this is the one i will keep it down so this is what we have seen this is the p chart diagnostic chart this is p chart this is line chart i hope this video is very useful please do like share subscribe my channel you have wonderful day ahead